Hello Commanders, Commander Plater here, back with another Elite Dangerous video, and today I'm talking about something which has been somewhat of a hot topic around the forums for quite a while now, and especially with the current situation where everyone's talking about interaction between players. Now what we're talking about is a player-driven economy. Now when I say a player-driven economy, what do I mean? I'm talking about trading from players to players, not having to rely on NPCs to purchase things, not having to rely on station outfitting for you to have to be able to buy your ship components or even ships altogether. Imagine if you could put down a stack of cash and buy a fully loaded out modded ship of your choice. Would that be a good thing? Would it not be a good thing? So yeah, that's right. I'm back with another discussion video. Now I'm going to be talking about a couple of things initially where I think the direction of this kind of topic could go. Now first of all, some things we need to consider is currency value fluctuations. Now would the credit value change? So would a, a 7A frameshift drive for example still be worth the same as it is? Or would it be worth a different amount depending on uh, whether you're buying it from a station or from a, a player-based sales site such as like an auction house or that type of thing. Now if you are doing that, why would you? Would you buy from the station or would you buy from the auction house? Which one would be cheaper? What would be the benefits of having one cheaper than the other? Obviously if the player-based one is somehow cheaper then who's going to be selling their components unless they're actually going to be having a real heavy cut taken from you when you are selling it back to a station in the first place. So that's kind of one thing to think about there, that would be a potential trade-off. You either sell it straight back to the station for a cash value or you can resell it onto another player who doesn't want to pay full value. That type of trading sounds pretty good to me. You know, it would help with some social interaction and if you could do that it'd be fantastic. Obviously you wouldn't be able to sell the frameshift drive right out of your ship, you'd have to do it some way from storage and there would have to be some system for this to be able to happen. Something else to consider, credit farming. Credit farming would go on and become a problem. It's historical in all MMOs of any kind where they have a player driven economy. You'll have bots where you have people that sit there play all day every day gaining credits, especially in the current situation at the moment. And yes, I am guilty for uh, making a quick buck off of the skim emissions and all that kind of stuff and the mass commissions over in 17 Draconis. But imagine that being absolutely rinsed all the time by groups of players who are just going to be selling credits for cash. So again, it's the classic, you go onto a gold seller's website in WoW or a credit seller in Star Wars The Old Republic. All that type of stuff that are coming in there. And that's a really negative thing and a really negative part of MMOs. And that is something that I wouldn't want to see at all. Next up, would faction ship permission stay or go? Say I have a second hand cutter and I want to go and sell that onto someone. Would they have to have the same rank? Would they have to still have that ship unlocked with the Empire, or would that be, oh look it's a second hand ship, doesn't count, I can have it. Something again to think about. Also with the Corvette, Federal Assault ship, all those types of things, would you be able to sell them to a player that doesn't have the rank, or would that potential part of the grind still have to stay there? To counter that, something that would need to be thought about would be a bind on account type situation. When I say that, similar to WoW or Star Wars The Old Republic and also Star Trek Online, all games that I've played, when you buy an item, some things they bind on pickup to your account, so it means that you can't then resell it in an auction house. I, I figure that maybe with the faction specific ships that would have to happen uh, if they were to implement this type of thing. Now something else that would also be thought about is the engineers. Would they still be used by players or not? Only some players would probably use them, or some would go, engineer ships, and then sell on the components once they've engineered a, a frameshift drive. If you can take one that's had its range extended to the absolute maximum and you've not had to grind for any materials, then maybe it'd be worth it. But how many credits would that cost? Can you put a value on credits for an engineer upgrade? Well, that's something that Frontier were probably trying to avoid in the first place when they put the engineer upgrades in there, not relying on credits initially. Also with this, something to think about is player interaction. Now, player interaction is something that is sorely lacking at times in Elite Dangerous, and I'm a culprit of this, where I have not contacted people, I've just got on with my game, I've put my head down, gone into a resource extraction site and just shot NPCs all night long. But that's pretty standard, you know, it's not unheard of. But at the same time, I'm part of a player group, I'm pretty active with them and I do talk to people. But the idea of being able to sell components from one person to another, 
would that then simply leave system chat just as simple as want to sell gold, want to sell grade 5 dirty drive, your materials, 5 million credits, or whisper me with offer, that type of thing. Would that happen? Is that something we would do? I imagine that people would use it exactly the same, because a lot of people who play Elite Dangerous have had previous experience in MMOs, and certain habits do come over. And that this could potentially be one of them. Something else to think about as well is would we simply be able to transfer money from one player to another by simply, I don't know, putting something up on the auction house and being like, oh, I'm selling this for 1 million credits and it's a friend of yours and you can just simply quick sell. And you can go over and essentially you're transferring them 1 million credits for a nothing item. This type of thing could potentially destabilize the experience of new players playing. A very important part of Elite Dangerous is that when you first start playing, you start off in a Sidewinder, the most basic ship there is, and you learn, and you learn to fly it. As the game progresses and you progress, you progress onto larger ships, and you get more involved, and you do, you learn more about the ships, the modules, what can be fitted where, which ship for what purpose, but this could potentially destabilize the game. I'm all for helping newer players out, and going into like a resource extraction site with them so they can learn some best practices on bounty hunting. And I was only doing that the other night where I was playing with someone and they weren't entirely sure the best process for player interaction and all that kind of stuff. More than happy to help them out and I will continue to help people as well. Something to think about as well is commodities. Now, where would the commodities go or come from? So, at the moment, in games like World of Warcraft, you can only get gold bars from digging them up. Now, you go, you mine, you create them, you sell them. You can't buy them for vendors. Would the same thing have to happen with commodities in Elite Dangerous? Would you have to rely on a mi the mining community, as it were, to go mine gold, osmium, all that kind of stuff, come back, sell it, and then it's only there at that station? Or do they then go and sell it on the auction house, and you have to decide whether or not it's going to be worth it for you? Or, instead of auction house, galactic market, say. Would that help you, or would that be, would that kind of limit the amount of commodities around? Because everything's purchasable somewhere in the galaxy at the moment, even Metro Alloys. Would this then cause players to move away from certain types of stations, so people wouldn't necessarily find themselves in refinery systems? Because why would they need to, or mining systems? They wouldn't need to go there, because they could simply go and purchase something from somewhere else. And also, if we did have this galactic commodities market, would it be selling items from all over the galaxy only from that station or would it be that you can buy it from anywhere so as long as you go to one of the major faction stations you would be able to purchase items from anywhere only at that point i mean or would it render the commodities market completely defunct altogether would stations stop restocking commodities automatically now, commodity storage would be something else to think about. Now, Frontier have already said for engineer-wise, they're just removing commodities because it's too complicated for them to work out how to put in place. That's reading between the lines. Obviously, they said it needs a rebalance, and overall, they aren't happy with the way the process has gone, particularly. So, we'd have to have a player bank of some kind. Whether that be a specialised station, like a bank station, where you fly, you go in, and you have certain amount of commodity storage you have there or would it be like stashes on planets so when you come across those little stockpiles with skimmers there would that be something there and you at risk of them being discovered and stolen that would be something interesting versus the the invincible space stations that you can't possibly destroy or damage in any single possible way apart from ua bombing that's just a few things to think about so far really would it have any effect at all or would it just simply cause all those people with billions of credits to become those who hold all the chips in the game and they buy up commodities and they just sit on them and they get more money from people so they buy them when they're cheap they sit on them they hold them all that kind of stuff and it would create that very much yes a player driven economy but the rich would be rich and the poor would be poor and without any of the decent ships but at the same time something else to think about is that there is a there's no set money cap at the moment so people would simply be able to just go and keep grinding money grinding money grinding money and the money itself would necessarily have no value because that would cause overinflation and we're talking about once again will credits stay at the same value or not people are going to keep buying things keep selling things and keep getting more and more credits plus you can sell things to vendors plus you'd be able to buy things from them as well 
So there needs to be some kind of thought about that somewhere in there, I guess. And this is potentially why so far Frontier has stayed well clear of it. But I'm, once again, I am interested to hear people's thoughts on this. So get in the comments, leave me a comment in there, and tell me what you think Frontier could potentially do in the future around player-driven economy. Once again, I'm Commander Plater. I want to thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you already have subscribed. That way, you can see when I put a new video up, and you can come and watch it. So once again, thank you for watching. Commander Plater out.